Section 3.3, cycles of matter. Key concept number one, how does matter move among the living and non ecosystem? system? Recycling in the biosphere, energy and matter move through the biosphere very differently. Unlike the one flow, one way flow of energy, matter is recycled within and between biosystems, or I'm sorry, ecosystems. Elements, chemical compounds, and other forms of matter are passed from one organism to another and from one part of the biosphere to another through biogeochemical cycles. Matter can cycle because biological systems do not use up matter, they transform it. Matter is assembled into living tissue or passed out of the body as waste products. The first cycle is the water cycle. All living things require water to survive. Okay, everybody see the water cycle? Okay, all right, so now as you see down here we have the ocean. The sun shines on the ocean, heats up the water, and we have evaporation. All right, so the evaporation, water vapor floats into the atmosphere. All right, and we also have transpiration, which is where water vapor is passed from plants into the atmosphere. Okay, now all this goes into the atmosphere and creates clouds. Now, once the clouds become super saturated, we have condensation. Okay, now after the condensation, once there's so much condensation in the clouds and they're super saturated, we have precipitation, which is also known as rain. Now, as the rain falls down onto the land, it runs off. We have runoff, or we have it into lakes and it seeps into the groundwater. Okay, then it runs into the oceans. Okay, and it's just one big cycle. Water molecules enter the atmosphere is water, vapor, a gas when they evaporate from the ocean or other bodies of water. The process by which water changes from a liquid form to an atmospheric gas is called evaporation. Water can also enter the atmosphere by evaporating from the leaves of plants in the process of transpiration. Water vapor condenses into tiny droplets that form clouds. The water returns to the Earth's surface in the form of precipitation, also known as rain. Water enters streams or seeps into soil where it enters plants through their roots. Key concept number two. How are nutrients important in living systems? Nutrient cycles. All the chemical substances that an organism needs to sustain, sustain life are in its nutrients. Every living organism needs nutrients to build tissues and carry out essential life functions. Similar to water, nutrients are passed between organisms and the environment through biogeochemical cycles. Primary producers, such as plants, usually obtain nutrients in simple organic forms from their environment. Consumers obtain nutrients by eating other organisms. The carbon cycle. Carbon is a key ingredient of living tissue. Biological processes such as photosynthesis, respiration, and decomposition take up and release carbon and oxygen. Geochemical processes such as erosion and volcanic activity release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and oceans. Biogeochemical processes such as the burial and decomposition of dead organisms and their conversion under pressure into coal and petroleum, also known as fossil fuels, stored the carbon underground. Human activities such as mining, cutting and burning forests, and burning fossil fuels release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, as illustrated right here in this diagram. All right, we have CO2 in the atmosphere, CO2 in the ocean. CO2 is used in photosynthesis. The photosynthesis then feeds 
the animals. They respirate when they breathe. They release CO2 back in the atmosphere. Then they die and decompose. And then you have over here you have the deposition, which are the fossil fuels, which you see the oil rigs pumping them out. All right, and then it all is just one big cycle. And then the human activity puts the fossil fuels back into the or puts the CO2 back in the atmosphere. The nitrogen cycle. All organisms require nitrogen to make proteins. <coughs> Although nitrogen gas is the most abundant form of nitrogen on earth, only certain types of bacteria can use this form directly. Such bacteria live in the soil and on the roots of plants called legumes. They convert nitrogen gas into ammonia in a process known as nitrogen fixation. A lagoon is a peanut. Other bacteria in the soil convert ammonia into nitrates and nitrites. Once these products are available, producers can use them to make proteins. Consumers then eat the producers and reuse the nitrogen to make their own proteins. Here's the nitrogen cycle. The N2 in the atmosphere. It's used in synthetic fertilizer, bacterial nitrogen fixation, and then you have NH3. Then it's uptake by producers. Then it's reused by the consumers. Then the consumers die and they decompose and they excrete NH3. And then the organisms in the dirt in the earth use it. It's taken up by the producers. They then reuse it by the consumers. Then they decompose and excrete back to the bottom. And then it goes back into the atmosphere. When organisms die, decomposers return nitrogen to the soil as ammonia. The ammonia may be taken up again by producers. Other soil bacteria convert nitrites, nitrates into nitrogen gas in a process called denitrification. This process releases nitrogen into the atmosphere once again. The phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus is essential to organisms because it helps form it helps forms important molecules like DNA and RNA. Most phosphorus exists in the form of inorganic phosphate. Inorganic phosphate is released into the soil and water as sediments wear down. Phosphate eventually enters the ocean where it is used by marine organisms. Some phosphate stays on land and cycles between organisms and the soil. Plants bind the phosphates into organic compounds. Organic phosphate moves through the food web and to the rest of the ecosystem. Nitri nutrient limitation. The primary productivity of an ecosystem is the rate at which organic matter is created by producers. One factor that controls the primary productivity of an ecosystem is the amount of available nutrients. If a nutrient is in short supply, it will limit an organism's growth. When an ecosystem is limited by a single nutrient that is scarce or cycles very slowly, this substance is call it, called a limiting nutrient. When an aquatic ecosystem receives a large input of a limiting nutrient, such as runoff from heavily fertilized fields, the result is often an immediate increase in the amount of algae and other producers. The result is called an algal bloom. Algal blooms can disrupt the equilibrium of an ecosystem. Section quiz. Transpiration is part of the water cycle. Carbon is found in the atmosphere in the form of 
carbon dioxide. Biologists describe nutrients as moving through cycles because the substances are passed between organisms and the environment and then back to organisms. The only organisms that can convert nitrogen in the atmosphere into a form useful to living things are nitrogen fixing bacteria. When aquatic ecosystem receives a large input of a limiting nutrient, the result is algal bloom.